All right. What we're going to do is just ask you to give uh, someone from your group to give a brief report. We want to hear about the message, the audience, and then just some of the key points in the development process, maybe what were something that was hard, uh, something that really helped. We, we don't want you to read through the, the whole sheet, OK? So just a one to two minute report. And we're going to start with group 10, I think. Yes, which had situation one. Thank you, Lori. So we had an opportunity to help, was the key word, write an article for the local paper about the work your community a 2 d coalition or the work of your prevention agency. So our main message was going to be that the audience, they can make a difference, right? So starting with grabbing them and that they're powerful, right? Um, let's see. Our primary audience, we figured, was adults mainly that are reading the newspaper. Okay. They're concerned about, you know, safety, their values and beliefs, primary audiences. What else did we say about that as far as our values? You know, not in my house, some of these things are going to happen, so that'll kind of draw them in, right? Um, what are some conflicting or competing messages? Well, definitely we have, you know, local bars who are playing drinking games. Okay. So we have some competing things going on there with fundraisers and alcohol use, right? So okay. we have some right. of that competition going on. Um, some of the messages, to, when sending the message, um, how we're going to do it is getting their attention right off the bat. So there's going to have to be some kind of a compelling, random type of thing that's going to draw them in, right? Okay. First, and then kind of tell them the things that are happening. And then some opportune times would be like during the spring break, some times where maybe alcohol use is more prevalent okay. before summer or kids going to college, that kind of thing. We thought some compelling stories would be using youth stories, right? Mm -hmm. to maybe why they don't use. Audience, adults kind of want to hear that. Um, resources, so we need to get connected with these kids, right? Yeah. We need to make sure our editor knows exactly what our message is that we want to uh, write, so okay. it's accurate. Good. All right. So the main thing is you can make a difference yep. is the message, and the primary audience would be adults mm -hmm. when you work through all of that. Yep. Okay. Anything, any other comments on that one? All right, great, let's give them a hand. Nice job, all right, that's situation one. All right, who has situation two? Right there. And you can we're read the situations that they had to deal with on here, yeah, on your sheet. Everybody can look that. Okay, look we're gonna tag team. I'm WCCO, and I wanna know from Abby, <laughs> Um, several high school athletes have been suspended due to their alcohol use at a party and, are, and have been arrested by law enforcement. Can you comment for us on that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our um, key message that we wanted to get across was that our community doesn't tolerate alcohol use and supports law enforcement and state sports league policy around alcohol use and youth. Um, outcomes we wanted to achieve was just communicating that there's fairness and consistency when enforcing laws and policies around alcohol okay. use. Um, our primary audience we thought would be students and parents, school staff, but really targeting athletes and um, parents of athletes. Okay. Uh, key values that we thought the primary audience would have would be leadership, being role models for their school. Um, any conflicting or competing messages. We thought the idea that sometimes sports is seen like at a higher level than other, maybe um, st like athletes are seen at a higher level or are special compared to other students. Um, Which means that they can get away with things? Is yeah. that where you're going? Okay, yeah. all right, okay. Um, also, if there's like alcohol sponsorships or use during events, that that could send the wrong message as well. Okay. Um, let's see um, how we're going to send the messages. Well, since someone, the media came to us, we would use that earned media. media. Yeah. Okay. Um, opportune times and places whenever that media approaches us. <laughs> uh, let's see. We would try to tell a story more that the vast majority of student athletes don't use alcohol okay. rather than using the story of those who did ah, use. Okay. So like a more positive spin on it. Um, yeah, and again, like resources. 
it's really just the opportunity that the media okay. gives us. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice job. Thank you very much. All right. So our community doesn't tolerate use, and we support law enforcement and the rules. Yeah. Great. And that other message. There's two messages, because I got the other message of the majority of student oh, athletes yeah. do not use. Yeah. So yeah. you really had two messages you were getting At out. At least right. two messages. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Great job. All right. Who has situation number three? Right over here. <laughs> Um, our situation is that there has been a tragic car crash involving teens in your community. It has become public knowledge that several of the teens, including the driver, were drinking alcohol. This seems to be an opportunity to point out the importance of prevention. Yet, you need to be sensitive to the families in the community who have lost a family member or have had someone they knew injured. You have been asked to speak to a group of parents we're organizing to make sure this never happens again. So our, um, the message that we decided that we want to send is that teens are prone to making poor decisions. And the outcome that we're trying to achieve is um, helping more adults understand um, teen brain development and that hopefully when they get that information they will use that understanding of team brain development to um, guide their parenting. So obviously our audience is parents mm -hmm. and some of the key values that are present with our parents are um, safety, safety for our kids um, and safety for the community and we also value family and the future of our kids. Um, the conflicting or competing messages that the audience may be dealing with is um, some of the beliefs among parents of the rite of passage, that this is you know, what kids do. Um, the, also the belief that kids will be kids. Um, and also maybe the conflicting belief of, well, we drank when we were kids. So, so some of those things would be conflicting um, messages. How are we going to send the message? Well, we've been asked to come to a presentation. We have, we have a teachable moment. Um, certainly it, it has some challenges because it's in the midst of a tragedy. But we have the, um, in our favor is that we have a teachable moment and so the audiences are gathering. Um, so we think that if we can connect with some key experts to bring in some very knowledgeable key experts um, around teen brain development. Also it might be an opportunity to um, submit newspaper articles. Um, we certainly want to make sure adults have resources available on this to provide links to things. Um, for example, in those parent groups or churches or schools. Um, so. Yeah, it's, a, it's an opportunity to get some of our things out. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the opportunity is actually we have that teachable moment. It's as unfortunate it is that sometimes those opportunities are that catalyst for these kind of conversations. Um, What specific examples? Um, we just had stated that, you know, we don't want to dwell on the situation, but we can also recognize that as unfortunate as the tragedy is, it's bringing us together, and, and here's what we can learn within the context of the tragedy. It already is a story. Yes. Yeah. Already exactly. That is, that is, is the that, story. That is the story, yeah. the, the, the that mm -hmm. we have that story presented to us. And then what resources will we need to carry this out is we certainly want to utilize um, key experts in the community. Maybe, um, maybe it is a time to bring in, I mean, this might be where you get a big bang for your buck kind of situation. So, um, and, and using those tips and things that you have, so. Okay, thank Very you. Very good, thank All you. All right, nice job. All right. Situation four. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay. Situation four. Prom is one month away. You know that many youth in your community engage in some risky behaviors around this time of year, which often includes alcohol and drug use. You want to get some information out to parents and or students. Um, so uh, we, we started with the audience and decided we wanted to target this message for students attending prom. Mm -hmm. Um, and we kind of had two messages going. One um, is prom is a once in a lifetime experience. Don't let drugs or alcohol spoil our memories. Mm -hmm. And that would be a peer to peer message. And then there's um, a message coming from like some of the favorite teachers and coaches and staff and administrators that Prom is once in a lifetime. Don't let alcohol or drugs spoil your memories. And so um, we decided on that kind of memorable, nostalgic experience because um, the values we think students attending prom have are is that they want it to be fun, um, kind of this self-respect and pride piece. Um, they want joyful memories. And then there's that whole like appearances and self-image um, value mm -hmm. and so we were trying to feed off of that and then the conflicting or competing messages would be that alcohol will enhance your prom experience mm -hmm. um, and so when we were thinking about how to send these messages again there were kind of two different sets of messengers there were peers um, sending the message don't let it spoil our experience and then um, staff and coaches teachers um, saying don't let it spoil your prom and we thought we could use some positive stories or memories that um, coaches or staff or teachers wanted to share about their proms so positive healthy memories and then um, we thought there were kind of different venues so maybe school staff could have t-shirts that say you know don't let it spoil your memories mm -hmm. um, or we could use school assemblies um, homeroom time with those seniors, um, all sorts of different venues than the traditional print mm -hmm. um, messages. And again, those compelling stories would be the positive, healthy prom experiences coming from others. And we thought um, pictures, you know, if people had pictures from their prom, you know, it might be a fun thing to look at pictures, what prom looked like in the 60s or the early 90s or something like that might be a fun thing that would get the attention of students. And then, um, yeah, the resources, we would need administration support, teacher support and cooperation. We would need the actual materials like the t-shirts and the print materials and mostly time. <laughs> mostly Which is time. in short supply. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Very good, thank you. Very good, thank you, nice job. All right. Um, we had Minnesota student sur survey data for your school or community is just being released. You want to use this information to get something out to various constituents in your community. And we took various constituents because that could be a lot of different populations or whatever. Would be like parents, school boards, city council, county board, people who would be interested in the um, MSS data. Um, the messages we really just wanted to send out was just um, the data. <laughs> I don't know if we had a really specific one, but um, maybe just on certain topics that um, even your community's been working on itself and prevention and mm -hmm. stuff would be good. Um, we wanted to build awareness um, and knowledge. Um, their key values and beliefs probably would be just the safety of the kids in the community and knowledge of you know like what the kids are doing and what's mm -hmm. going on, where they live. Um, conflicting or competing messages. Um, the kids or people may question the data and tell you that people or the kids are lying on it and it's not true. Um, and a lot of people just assume that others don't tell the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna get these out through public presentations and press releases at board meetings and staff meetings and such where we have to find them. And we would just uh, possibly tell data trends increasing or decreasing. Um, and again, well, this kind of goes with the specific examples, but connecting it with the prevention work, um, really building on your success stories that your community's been working on and highlight the impacts that it's had. And resources, again, is time. 
was our first one. Um, printing needs, maybe you can get the Department of Education staff to help. Uh, media, newspaper, and then technology. So. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Good job. Okay. All right. Thank you for data. So, so this is something that happens every, what, couple of years we get the data back? Every three years. So every three years. And when's it coming out again? That will come out this fall. So the situation that's going to be there is that either your use is going to be up or your use is going to be down. So I would encourage you to think through the messages you want to send because you don't know, right? So you don't know what it's going to be over three years. Oh, God willing, it's down. And it probably will be a mixture of up and down. So I would encourage you to write a couple of messages that you have ready to send as soon as that data is released. One with it up and one with it down. Because you know that monitoring the future has started to prepare their messages right now. They've started to, to do their work on writing. Um, and they, they don't wait until the data is out to, to start preparing the messages. So think about that, about, about what messages you want to send up or down. All right. Situation six. Is that what we're up to? Yes, six. Oh, OK. You're the frustrated group. Um, so our situation is basically that our coalition is um, losing a little bit of um, momentum. Um, and I thought it was interesting, we talked about a few possible messages that we would get out to people. Um, so we talked about maybe letting people know about our accomplishments and our success, or we talked about, no, this isn't what we decided on. Okay. Um, <laughs> or, you know, a message about like, what can you do and here's how you can help. And we decided, I think, to be a little pragmatic. And we said, we're gonna talk about what's in it for them because I think that's a pretty key message. Um, so um, a message basically around we have resources to invest in prevention. And that's why we think people would want to be involved with us. Uh, so um, we want um, members to recognize that there is a benefit to the agency um, and that they want to partner with us and be involved in prevention efforts. Um, so we were focusing this um, specifically on professionals. We think the message would be quite a bit different if it were trying to reach out to parents or community members. Um, and um, that the audience, um, a lot of them feel that they have really limited resources and time, um, and, uh, but they value efficiency and effectiveness. Uh, some of the conflicting or competing messages, um, a lot of people who we want at the table think that prevention is a waste of time or that prevention isn't a priority. Um, so we need to be able to, to counter some of that. Um, we talked about um, you know, having meetings with them at their location. We don't see this as a, you know, a huge community-wide message. We we're really talking about, you know, what specific partners do we want to have at the table and going to them to deliver the message, um, but also possibly having some peer-to-peer -peer recruitment. Um, so, very good. Well. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I'm <laughs> Thank you. All right. Situation seven. I like that you raised your hand for the microphone. All right, way to go. Yeah, I got suckered into this, believe me. I said, <laughs> I, I said not me last. Um, so our situation is we are looking for ways to involve more students and young adults into our prevention efforts. Um, we have had limited success in the past. There's a sad group in one of the high schools, but it doesn't seem to be particularly active. So our message is obviously going to be aimed directly at youth and young adults. Um, we decided to key in on their driving need to belong. So we want to make our group the cool group. But in doing so, um, we kind of create our own conflicting or competing message in that anybody who is not into prevention um, would immediately want to counteract and say, no, that's really not the cool group. We're the cool group over here. We have way more fun. Um, so we're going to have to figure out that. Um, we also thought that a lot of times youth and young adults get the conflicting message that their opinion doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work on that. And then other activities competing for their time and their resources would be another thing we would need to overcome. So um, we decided that the best way to send the message was through a personal invitation. 
from multiple people in multiple ways, but very consistent, and we always go to them. So when is the opportune time and place? Anywhere and any time that youth meet in a group, anywhere and any time you are talking to a youth. So um, some of our stories, we were gonna try to pull stories from straight out of our communities. Um, something along the lines of if you knew this person was gonna commit suicide, would you do something to stop it? If you know your friends are harming themselves through HOD use, are you going to do something to try and stop it? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Um, and then we just really want to make sure that we tell them other youth have made a difference, whether from our community or nationally or other stories. It's like you have the power to make a difference. So resources, the biggest one is people. People armed with a well-developed message. So it's going to take time. We're gonna to have to have access to the kids and we're going to have to train the people so that every person putting out this message is consistent. Mm -hmm. All right, a lot of work, nice job, thank you. All right. And I recorded three messages in there um, as you were talking. We're the cool group. That's the ultimate that you want to accomplish. Um, your opinion matters, and you have the power to make a difference. Both go into that whole empowerment part of a message, which is really critical. Because anytime we're trying to involve anybody, whether it's an adult or a young person, this is why they should do it. So good job on that. Thank you. Situation eight, right here. Our situation is uh, diversifying our funding sources f away from state and federal grants and to funding from a local foundation and our charge is to write a letter of inquiry to that local foundation for funding support and we're limited to one page. So our message is assuming that the local foundation is concerned about the local community our message is that we can help to benefit things in the community. Our outcome is funding support. Um, let's see, primary audience characteristics that we wanted to keep in mind are that this board probably gets a lot of funding requests from a lot of different places. So we wanna, we want to keep that in mind, but we also wanna know, we also anticipate that a mix of data and stories will be most effective. Uh, values and beliefs. Um, I have no idea what that note means. That's okay. Oh, we would do some re <laughs> we would do some research to make sure that the values and beliefs held by this foundation and its board members are a good match with what we're going to propose and that we would get to know as much about the board members as individuals as we could so that we could so that we could be assured that what we're proposing is a good match for that group competing and conflicting i think the thing that we thought was primarily uh, the challenge there is knowing that they get asked for funding for lots of different things and so we have to be able to identify ways in which we not only are a good place for them to put resources but also that putting resources with us could very well be helpful to those other causes that that approach them for funding we wanted to in terms of how we wanted to um, find someone to author the letter who's connected to someone on the board or connected to the foundation in some way, we would take a look and see what their funding cycle is and match our request to that because we know that requests that come in off of the funding cycle often don't get uh, proper consideration. Mm, compelling stories. Because we only have a page, what we thought we would try to do is use data and then sort of extrapolate that to bring it close to home. So for example, if the data says that 4% of sixth graders have used alcohol in the past 30 days, while that seems like a small number in our community, that translates to 260 kids, and one of those kids might be your next door neighbor, and then a, a story that went with that, so that we could wrap that all into to a pretty concise piece. Um, then in terms of resources, mostly time, but also the resource of connections to people that we would want to capitalize on. All right. Carla, was there anything else? Nice job. Thank you very much, Kathy. All right.
Actually, I think it's going to go right across the table. So, thank this you. is this is a good use of data, um, doing this kind of data. Like, so we know that in the data is held pretty steadily. That in a classroom of well, 25% of kids are living in a home where, where alcohol and other drugs are a problem, right? I mean, that's held pretty. That's still pretty standard out there. Well, if you say in your classroom of 25 students, what's the math? You know, think about it. So you have use, using that kind of of number, mm -hmm. and one of them might be your neighbor. That's a compelling way to use data. Mm -hmm. Percentages are eh. they don't translate to my my classroom or my home or my community well. Yeah, that's a specific example too. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. All right, right. Where situation nine and our situation involves a young athlete who has discovered an all-natural alternative to um, a performance-enhancing drug and has brought it to their coach for consideration. So our message um, that we want to get out to folks is um, healthy life choices equals athletic success. So we want to take a positive spin on that. Um, and some of the key points that we want to talk about is um, good nutrition, getting good sleep, maybe getting some kind of a, a circuit training program going. All of those things can enhance your performance in a natural way where you're not doing it chemically or in some other way that could be dangerous. And um, some of our development, how we kind of worked through this process is we started with what our outcome um, what the outcome was that we wanted to achieve. Um, and then we kind of worked sort of down from there and one of the last pieces that we did was the message that we wanted to send because um, it was a little easier, I think, to start jumping in with what is the message we want to send. But when we really looked at this sheet and started talking about it, it's like, no, really we want to figure out what the outcome is and then, then kind of work backwards from there. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the, I think one of the things that we talked a lot about was some of the resources. Um, getting community members involved, getting parents involved in maybe doing some breakfasts or, or suppers or other you know, food where we're really promoting nutrition. Maybe getting like a SNAP fitness or other kind of fitness group in the community involved in maybe offering some circuit training and just really pushing and promoting those positive, healthy lifestyles and, and pointing out the negatives, even if it says it's healthy or it says it's all natural, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's safe. Mm -hmm. So getting those two messages out was kind of Good. how we did it. All right. So always remember with that, so you've got your message and all those events that you're gonna do are gonna carry the same message, right? right. Brought to you by XYZ Coalition, right? So you're hitting two things. So we started the, this whole thing talking about the overlapping circles, right? Mm -hmm. they, they overlap. So the message that you want to you send here should always be accompanied by your logo. So it's the image that you're out there doing these positive things in your community. So you're sending these messages hoping that individuals will make a, a change. But that message out there will also impact volunteers that work with you. It'll involve, it will impact the number of the amount of funding that you might get if that, that gets out there for your organization. So all, just remember that all three of these messages, those areas, interlock and help you. But you have to be intentional about it. So I was working with a, a, a community that had this great coalition. They were just, they were so positive and they were doing all these wonderful activities in the community so that the kids would have something else to do and a really high risk time, so they target it, but they weren't sending the message. And they weren't having their logo present all the time. And so, so it, only, it only did one, hat, one part of what it could have done. So, so think about this as a multiplier effect as you're designing your messages. Mm -hmm. And also what Melissa said is, is important. This isn't necessarily a linear process. I mean, you decided for that situation it was better to start with the outcomes work through a couple of things to come up with a message. And remember, you can go 
back and forth. You might want to take this and rearrange it because you're finding that maybe we want to talk about outcomes first most of the time. Or in some cases, well, maybe we need to consider, we have a range of messages, but we need to consider the audience first. So just remember, as we said, it's not necessarily linear. So you may want to change that form around or just know that you can start in different places. Need to give them a hand? Yeah. Thank you. Let's go. Okay, so you've, you've had these nine situations that you've looked at that have, have then, um, you've taken the form and worked through the process of message development. Hopefully this is a tool that you can use with a communications team that you have anytime you're thinking about targeting um, a message and getting a message out. But I also want to call your attention that over the day, we have now one, two, three, four sets of messages. So I encourage you to, as you think, as you start to do this message development, that you keep some files. One file is, is a file of messages that you want to send. Another is keep a log of the situations that have come up in front of you and how you've used those messages. And the third is to start to keep a stories file because we all th always think we're going to remember them. It's just like our kids growing up, right? You know, you always think you're going to remember those cute little stories, and you don't. You forget them. And even though our moms and dads said you're going to forget them, write them down, we didn't. And so it's lost another generation. But I encourage you to do that. Keep a log. And that's one of the things that the CDC toolkit shows you, is that, that um, how to keep those, how to collect those, and get, get a process going. A diary, a journal is wonderful. Most of us don't keep that, but it's really, it's a really helpful thing to, to do. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to sh show you the resources that are there for sure, and then we're going to go back to some action planning. But these are, these are, four, these are four resources that we think are really, really helpful as we were looking at, we looked at a ton of resources as we were putting this together. But in terms of practical guidance for you going forward, um, these are on your PowerPoint and you'll get a copy of the PowerPoint and all the stuff that we've used. But these are, these are four places that are really helpful. The community <coughs> toolbox is a really, has anybody used that before? It's out of Kansas City. Have you used it? It's just amazing. There's like all these free resources and on a bunch of topics, but they do have some information in there um, about messaging and about de message development. I used uh, just the background when I was doing my SAGE training. And it, uh, what I remember is that some parts of the data, some of the information was dated, but there was just a Right, right. Well, it's, they've gathered it for, I don't know, how many years. Yeah. So yeah, some yeah. of it's really dated. It's just, it's a toolbox. They've been throwing stuff in it for something like 30 years of community development. So it's just a place to go if you're like dulling out on your ideas for what you want to do. The community toolbox is great. Um, CDC's um, telling your program story. It focuses on or oral health, but I really thought that any of the concepts that they had in there were really applicable to anything that you were doing. Frameworks, we talked about framing, so that's a really helpful place, and it has that um, the tutorial on framing that's in there that's really useful. And Herndon Alliance um, looks at, it's really around the Affordable Care Act and promoting that, but they've done so much work in helping people understand how to promote that in their communities that it's something that you can use to apply it to um, alcohol and drug prevention. All right, back to a little bit of the action planning. We want to spend a few minutes and give you an opportunity to at least write down a few ideas and steps that you're going to take after today. So, so if, page eight. Mm -hmm. You turn to. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Page seven was a place for you to take notes, and we forgot to tell you about it. Yeah. So you've hopefully taken notes other places. So just work through this process. Um, you know, write down. While you're thinking about it, what might be three or four actions you'd like to take from the ideas that you've gathered today? That's the first line. And then spend a little time on selecting, thinking about what's the first one that you want to take action where you'd like to focus. 
do that in number two, and then on that one that you wrote in number two, spend a little bit of time writing things down for the next several items in terms of if you're actually going to start an action plan for that item, here are some steps that you can take. This is an action plan that you can use for anything that you're doing. It just is one that we found to be helpful in thinking through if, how are you going to take the information from today and use it. Um, the key thing is if you've come together as a coalition, we'll give you, um, we're only going to take about, I think about five minutes for you to think through, at least get started on the action plan and see what's there. Um, but do set a time when you can get together ag yeah. again to talk about the, about the action plan. So we're going to take um, until five minutes till three to work on the action plan. Then we'll come back for closure. Okay. Be done at three o'clock. What time do you have? I have 17 minutes to three. Okay. So you can get together with the people that you came with for this part. Um, just to s you can continue to work after. Um, after Kevin Marty's and I say our talking. last words here, and, and Kevin gives, or Tom gives you some directions. But I just wanted to thank all of you for taking the day to be here, for all of your work that you're doing in, in prevention. It's yeah. critical work. It's, you are unsung heroes in your communities and in the state. And I want to acknowledge that, that the work that you're doing is really bringing hope to a lot of communities. Um, where you, where you live and work. And so I'm just grateful for the work that you do. Thank you so very much. Yes, yeah, thank you so much for the, the work that you do. And as we talk today, it's often, you know, with limited resources, trying to do a lot of different things. And so hopefully today gave you a chance to just kind of step out of that a little bit and kind of think of a different way to approach at least part of your work. But we thank you for being here and for the great work that you do. Thank you. Thank you. And back to you. I, just, I want to thank uh, Kevin and Marty. They're not only friends of mine, but friends of prevention in Chisago County for many years. Uh, but more importantly, friends and true assets to prevention in Minnesota. So uh, we're lucky to have them here today. And thank you for your great work. And uh, we appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You've got three evaluation forms or forms that we'd like you to fill out before you leave. Um, I just wanted to say a, a little bit about the yellow sheet. Um, Minnesota has what's called a Minnesota State Substance Abuse Strategy, and I would encourage you to go to the DHS website and view that. You can download a PDF of the strategy. It's lots and lots of pages, but uh, I would recommend you reading the executive summary that pretty much captures what the strategy is all about. Um, it's about agencies working together on behalf of uh, prevention uh, to help consolidate the efforts throughout Minnesota. So, uh, but one of the parts of the strategy is I, I serve on uh, what's called a prevention messaging work group. And they asked us to collect a little bit of information today just to try and get a snapshot of what uh, prevention messages are you currently using in your community. And I, these are not easy questions to answer, so do your best to answer these. I understand that. But we want to know what messages are you using in your work in your community, and then are they effective, and how do you know that? Or if they're not effective, how do you know that? And this will serve as kind of a baseline or a snapshot for our committee to take back to the State Substance Abuse Strategy Committee. That's, that's the purpose of the yellow sheet. So if you could take just a minute or two to do your best to answer those Two tough questions, uh, we'll bring it back to the state committee and, and that will serve as a baseline or a snapshot of where we are at uh, with the folks that are here today. So uh, with that, I thank you all for coming and um, we're going to post the video uh, on the MPRC website when it's ready and we're also gonna make that available free of charge. So if anybody wants to order a copy and use it in your work in your own community, um, don't hesitate to ask for that also. Um, with that, we wish you well, drive home safely, and uh, thank you again for coming. Thank you, Tom. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Tom.